we are here to bring you everything and anything surrounding Porsche. I'm Mike. I'm Aaron. And this is P-Car Talk. All right, welcome to another episode of P-Car Talk. I'm Mike. And I'm Aaron. All right, let's go ahead and thank our people. We got a lot to talk about this show. Let's do it. We got Sriracha Boy Club members. We got Scott H., Sander A., Cody W., Aaron L., Javid V., Kalen R., Sean H., Matt W., Carl K., Zanke P. Then we got Matthew G., Brian R., Matthew M., Nikki F., Todd M., Richard P., Michael L., Ray L., Robert W., Kenneth S., those are our Sriracha Boys. And then we have our producers, Brandon J., Eric A., Robert G., Santiago H., Sharon C., Fernando F., and Bryce C. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so, so much. Really, really do mean it. Um, you guys are the ones that make the difference. And everybody that continues to renew, thank you. Um, if you haven't renewed, please consider it. We would really appreciate it. Uh, Flat Six Motorsports and us are doing a giveaway for the Porsche Experience Center. No purchase yep. necessary. Go to their website, um, follow the link, enter your information. If you purchase something, you definitely get more credits and more drawing opportunities to win your trip. Yeah, there's a link in our Instagram. Pretty badass trip. I would want to do it. Um, I've gone to the Experience Center, but I have not driven a vehicle there. We have, have friends that have done it. They love it. So who's ever going to win this trip is definitely going to have a fantastic time. So He signed up. We'll see if they notice. <laughs> You put your name in there or you put the P-Car Talk <laughs> website? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, P-Car Talk, you guys won. Mike and Aaron, oh, how about this? No. <laughs> Three chances to win. Yeah, I'm sure we would probably get a phone call. Be like, look, hey, actually, you guys did win on the randomizer. However, we cannot give you the trip. We'd be like, that's bullshit. <laughs> Fair and square. <laughs> Never win anything. Um, all right, quick talk about foreign. Uh, it's approaching rapidly. Um, Three weeks. Aaron just did brakes to his car. I did. He's following the warnings. So do your brakes, do your tires, um, get your food orders in if you're part of that trip. Um, if you're not part of that trip, definitely get uh, yourself on that waiting list, and maybe you'll be on it next year because we are maxed out, and we would love to have some different faces show up next year because we want the whole purpose of this is for you as the members to have a fun trip, and this one is going to be unbelievable, right? There's a lot of stuff cooking, a lot yeah. of giveaways coming up. Stuff. Um, as you would naturally think if you're just kind of thinking to yourself and never thinking about this stuff, but, you know, being in the fourth year of this thing, it gets better and better as time as we do as far as what we're providing for everyone. Um, and that's what this is basically going to be is, is a rendition of we basically have it totally dialed in. All of the home runs of all the roads we need to be on of all the giveaway stuff, we've got yeah. all the people participating. Even some new home runs. Exactly. I, there's going to be some good stuff. Great roads. I mean, we already we know the roads that we like. Yeah. We just add it on. Yeah, we basically trim the tourist fat. You're going to get yeah. on some roads, the people that are coming on this that I've never seen before, and they're going to be immaculate and going to be amazing. Um, there's going to be high-level uh, video done of this. Um, we're definitely going to be on top of that, make sure that we get the proper shot so you're going to get the full story told to you Mm -hmm. of what this looks like and if you haven't seen it you will see it eventually um the new video when it comes out when it's done that way you can see if you want to come on it next year if you're a club yep. member or Which if you're not a club member become a club member so you can come on the drive yeah but in all seriousness the the, the new video that's going to come out is going to be a step-by-step -step story of basically every day what you're going to see at, at far and what's going to happen at far and there's going to be no question what you're getting or what you're not getting when you come to foreign and i think anybody who sees this video is going to want to come again or that's never made it definitely want to come to the trip so yeah for we're sure. really excited to put that out for you guys and excited to go on the trip and go for the drive right yeah that's more exciting yeah all right so let's talk a little bit about this uh we got cayenne gen one talk so aaron and i have touched on this before but yeah. um in the Porsche Classics book, um, there's a big article in it as well. Uh, Porsche produced an article saying, hey, we're building Cayenne Safaris now, essentially. Um, the depth of that didn't really go into details of it, um, but it has moved into the Porsche Classics realm. And what that means is basically Porsche Classics is now remanufacturing parts for the Gen 1 Cayenne, um, much like they did with the 996. Uh, believe it or not, those have fallen into Porsche Classic category, which is beneficial for anybody who owns one of those vehicles or plans to own one of those vehicles because 
they're going to be making parts that maybe were held NOS and maybe had a super high number because they didn't make them anymore. Mm -hmm. They're going to be making parts for those vehicles again. Um, in addition to making new old stock parts, um, apparently they're going to be tricking stuff out, apparently. So they've seen how the movement has gone um, with all of these other individual companies building their own rendition of an off overlander Cayenne and whatnot. Well, that's probably there. That was their true vision in the first place was to build an overlander or at least something off that was super off road capable. I mean, as we saw in the, with the Gen one and a half mm -hmm. that they won, whatever, whatever they entered in, they yeah. won. Um, so it makes sense, but it's cooler that the now people that are buying these things still have some support. Yeah. On the back end. Do you think that th this is just more of a, they've seen how successful the market's been behind this and now they're seeing, hey, we're leaving some money on the table here. Why don't we try yeah. to attack this market? Do you think there's a little bit of that involved? Yeah, I think that. And and, and that um, the longevity of the guy in, I mean, there's, they just want to keep these, as, they want to keep these in the forefront. Hey, this is our Gen 1 product. Yeah. Still going. So yeah, there's by, something by to be said for that, right? Yeah, yeah, there's something to be said. They're obviously very proud of it. Um, mm -hmm which they should be. We've talked about how robust that vehicle is many, many times before, so I don't want to go overly redundant with that. But clearly, with the the Boxster uh, coming around um, in the late 90s, and then obviously the Cayenne coming around, pretty much helped make Porsche profitable again, essentially, right? It, it did a lot. I mean, that, that was it had a lot move. to do with it. Yeah, I'm not saying it was the only sure. thing to do, but those two cards had a yeah. big thing to do with turning Porsche around into the green and getting them out of the red. Can't go raising about the monies. Exactly. Um, so, like them or hate them, it, it has a big footprint within Porsche history. Um, they're acknowledging that, whether anybody likes them or not. Um, so, from what we gather, without too much detail, pretty much from the from the photos and the commissioned builds that they're doing um looks like wheels suspension roof rack some lighting graphic packages um so nothing overly funky but i'm sure any dollar figure can take it as funky as you want to get it right i mean it's all about yeah. money at the end of it so we've been to the porsche classic center in atlanta and when you get your vehicle there it's basically how deep are your pockets essentially if the vehicle is going to be built there however wild you want to go so if you did have a gen 1 cayenne and you wanted to do maybe something wild like a pts color or something like that i'm sure that is available if you want to do an entire engine rebuild you could do that if you wanted to do an entire interior change i'm sure cool you could they, do that they let you do a trans area like if you really wanted one and they go okay this is not the part of the original set but we'll do that asterisk yeah maybe like a tribute to yeah. one or something where you can kind of get one built or painted that way or done something mm -hmm. like that um, but then it goes back to dollar figures, right? Is it valuable enough so, for somebody to go in and commission? I don't know. I don't know what the number is. So I'm totally yeah. grasping at straws. I mean, because just say it's 150 grand to mm -hmm. do paint to everything, engine rebuild, paint, interior change, suspension, all of that stuff through Porsche. Is it worth going to buy fifteen thousand dollar Gen One Cayenne and going to do that? It may not be right now, but I mean, if we can, if you look at any of the other older stuff or something different like the Land Rovers, like yeah. eventually. It, it will make sense. Yeah, I get probably in the right hands. It makes mm -hmm. sense, especially if you're one of those people. It, it it has the pockets for it. I guess it really it doesn't matter what the dollar figure mm -hmm. is, right? It, it makes you have something more unique. Um, at the end of the day, especially if you're going to daily drive it or what you're going to do with it. Um, but again, I feel like you can get a lot of that vibe from going to other companies outside of Porsche. Um, I won't name drop them just for the fact that, you know, they're not sponsoring the show or anything, yeah. but they're not too hard to find. You Small know, one company of company in North Carolina. Yeah. There's a place in North Carolina and there's a guy in, uh, Georgia that builds them too. Yeah. Um, he, he works with a guy named, you know, it does the other 911 Safari. So he helps paint those cars. So I'll say enough with that. Yeah, um, I, I think that doesn't like, if anybody looked at that, it was like, Oh, it's going to hurt their businesses, but it wouldn't, it would never because there there's the volume that they're going to do is probably super low. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's going to hurt their, their business at all because yeah. there's a, there's going to be a huge price delta. Let's be honest. Oh, yeah. If anything, and the, the consumer may be hurt a little bit on this because those guys prices may go up actually, unfortunately on some of these parts yeah. that they make on some of the stuff that they do to these things. It's always um, a wait list stuff too. So. Yeah. So, I mean, from a sense of, 
I think it's they're pretty rad. Obviously, I have one. You have what? What is yours considered? Gen three. Gen three. Mm-hmm. Okay. And his is, if you don't never been in one, um, or driven one, or anything like that. No, they're not all the same. Uh, mine's is very agro, like agricultural. Um, Gen I, one. I think that just gives you tech. That's that's it. I think if they had, if they if they would update, if they come out with like uh, the same thing they did for the nine nine sixes, yeah, like the, a newer. I mean, I have a new unit right, in mine, yeah. but I'm I'm just saying like the feels in it. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels very agricultural, and some people actually like that vibe because it actually feels older. I think it actually feels older than it is, to be honest mm-hmm. with you, to be inside of it. Um, it does have some like nice creature comforts, obviously has seat heaters and all that stuff. Yeah, and like different diffs and stuff like that. You're yeah. Just, you have more beefier, more yeah, beefier like, products. Yeah, more of that. But I would say like touch points in your car are miles ahead of mine. Yeah. Obviously, Porsche figured that out once they got to Gen 3 with yours. And I mean, yours is all carbon fiber inside. Super, super nice. Um, way too nice to go basically beat the shit out of it is what I'm making. Um, so it kind of makes sense why people are buying these Gen 1s, maybe because they are kind of, I don't know if I want to use the term, but beaters, maybe. Yeah, I can say um, that. Or, be, or able to be beat Yeah, because my, my front bumper's chewed up, my rear bumper's chewed up. It's like, you know, hit you know when you back into the boat, it's got a little couple of little bumps on the bumper there. Yeah. Um, that's prior to my ownership, but whatever, I don't care. I mean, it is a daily. Yeah, you can back up a boat just fine. Yeah. So it, it's a daily. So I almost rather have that than having something super, super nice because the stress-free level of it, yeah. of not having, man, if I think I went and got that thing painted, even if I took it to the guy in Georgia and had him paint it some sexy color and all that stuff and brought it all back and, you know, for the purpose to go beat on it. And I know he beats the hell out of his because he, whether, you know, battle tests all the parts yeah. he builds. Um, I don't know if it would make sense in my head. It was like, oh, I just got it repainted. Oh, I just got all this done. And now it's... I can see where a wrap would make sense. Yeah. And then you could just get that torn up or muddy or whatever and just rip it off yeah because when it's like too nice it's almost kind of you know like damn i'm gonna go tear up a 10 15 20 thousand dollar paint job and i just got it done and you're like it's supposed to be an off-road vehicle it's supposed to be kind of torn up right true um so maybe just do what most people are doing just drive it the way it is and go add the suspension parts because obviously the suspension parts are going to get torn up put the roof rack on it put the bigger tires on it and already has scratched up paint even better because then you don't feel as guilty if you go off off road with it scrub uh, scrub some trees yeah either way i i don't think the whole point of bringing this up i don't think that movement's any close anywhere close to being done um i still think it's probably not i wouldn't say in its infancy but it's probably a a toddler at this point right so it's it's i don't think it's that it's at its full life end yet i think there's still going to be more companies that pop up i think there's still going to be more people who continue to do cayenne builds there's going to be a lot of people I feel like that have said the phrase, oh, I've always wanted to do those and they're finally going to do one or, you know, the time in their life is right. And I mean, I can't tell you how many times even just of our little pop up meets that we have, somebody else has bought a Cayenne and it's yep. in line to get done somewhere. You know, it, there's a ba- waiting list for even them for theirs to get built. Yep. There's a waiting list for this stuff to get built. So if you're interested and you're not going to build your own and you're not going to do that and you want one of these places to build it. Might as well buy it now, start driving it now, get yourself on the waiting list because everything has a waiting list now, apparently. Yep, that's so. the way it goes. And rightfully so. I mean, I think the right thing for some of these shops to do is to have the waiting list because we've talked about it before in the past where these there are these shops who just basically take on the business and not tell you there's a waiting list, but then just keep putting you off and not building your car, essentially. They... Yeah. They take a deposit from you. They're basically holding your car storage. This is bad project management and then there's, sales. Yeah, and then yeah. there's like a, you know, uh, oh, every three or four months, you're like, oh, wait, what's going on with my car? Oh, we're waiting on MoTeC right now. Oh, I don't know what's going on with that son of a bitch right now. But uh, if six, once six, that comes in here, we're going to get this thing right out the door. And then a year and a half goes by, and the damn thing's still not done. And now you're pissed off at the shop. Shop's pissed off at you. You want your car back. They're holding it hostage. You have to go in there like with a pitchfork and freaking, you know, beanbag shotgun. And <laughs> that's Mike's mechanic not, voice. Not non-lethal. No, that was shop ownership. Shop that wouldn't even. Shop. That wouldn't even. <laughs> it gets worse. No, it doesn't. The, the shop mechanic. He's probably nicer. He's like, hey man, I just work here, brother. <laughs> he's like, I, I'd work on your car. He told me not to touch it. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, 
get on the waiting list if you want to get something like that done. Pretty cool that Porsche Classic's doing it. Um, Are you going to get anything from Porsche Classic? Is there anything you want from them? They had some pretty cool like stuff for the roof racks, like the jerry cans and other yeah, stuff. Like yeah, they have some cool stuff. You don't absolutely need it all, no. but it really looks cool. Yeah, it, even just mo- more posery than, it, mm. than I even need. Hell no. I mean, the only thing I carry on my roof rack is a tire, and actually that's functionality. If just one of those bastards blows out, I can't put the spare on that car. Yeah, that would be fun um, for seeing you take that tire off the roof oh, rack. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've taken it off yeah. before. It's heavier right. than hell. But um, it actually has functionality. So I lo- that's the only thing on my roof rack because it's kind of like, oh, if I have a blowout, at least I have a spare, a full-size spare. Are there any other options uh, other than the one you got for the roof rack? I know the other company makes them. but Yeah, there's a couple different ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if you don't go with Eurowise, um, the one that they make, mm-hmm. I think a lot of you will go with the one I want. I have. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Front Runner mm-hmm. is the one I have. Um, pretty popular. Again, I still think I'm going to take my car up to Mike at your eyes eventually when I can find some time and I have to buy a fourth car just a daily because it's going to have to go up there because he has a waiting list even. Yep. I really want to get that panel roof taken out of it and yep. welded in a steel plate uh, like in its place. So that's just rigidity is better. Everything's just better. That panel roof Did just they leak is the, the worst. Yeah, they fucking leak. They yeah, they're oh. awful. Um Mine doesn't leak that bad because it has a lot of like uh, silicone, like oh, to prevent it from leaking. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't open it. Um, when I bought it, the guy told me he's like, "Look, I've handled all the leaks, but it's also I've handled it to the point where this thing doesn't open." I'm like, oh, "Okay, that's fine. I have no i I have no desire to open it because yeah. I was going to put a rack on it anyways." So it's literally just a pain in the ass to have it. Um, so I would say if you're going to shop one, keep that in mind. That's a I've never done a review on that car. It's something that we're probably going to do this winter. Yeah. If I would recommend if you're going to buy a Gen 1, just get – they don't make them slick top. And if there is a slick top out there, it's super rare. Uh, but get it with a small sunroof with just a, in the and front. delete that. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> but you can live with that at least yeah. um, as less mechanical working parts than a panel roof. Definitely That's don't right. go after a panel roof one. Um, I, you know, if you don't know that anything German with a panel roof eventually is going to ha- give you an issue. Mm. Um, that's just pretty simple. Um, it's cool for a while, but for longevity purposes, and I want to keep that thing for a while. Then you did. I want to get that thing yanked out of there. You had a two inch left on yours, right? Yep, two inch left. You, do you, would you go any higher? No, or do you think that's like the perfect amount. I think it's. I think it's great. It's super compliant in the city. Um, it it doesn't feel too big. It still it feels super nimble. There's not hardly any body roll in it still um i i I like the way it is that's cool yeah i would keep it the way it is um the audio review with jen one guy yeah (laughs) just no just what not to buy right um with one um i would definitely stay away from the pan roof uh uh, from that and if you know a lot of people ask should you get the the six cylinder or the s definitely get the s um yes they're horrible on gas but so is the six yeah actually because Corey has one too i think it's like two mpgs difference from the six and the s and the power difference is massive so get the sound difference for yeah so get the s yeah Yeah. get the s 100 percent um kind of an odd thing that's happening let's move on uh porsche or maybe not odd depending on how you look at it porsche is already testing the 992.2 gt3 at the ring oh interesting so it's been spotted um has some different stuff not a ton as you would expect with a dot two some revisions uh some bumper revisions here and there um i'm sure they probably learned a couple things with the rs that's what i was just about to say it probably is stealing some stuff but not to copy the rs but they make it a gt3 way um to use some of that arrow in that bump rear bumper so if it's a dot two then it's going to be faster than the rs is that they just released normally right i don't know i doubt it i doubt it um i think it's going to be stronger than the the dot one for sure. yeah but i mean then you're i mean you're really splitting hairs at that point right because what is the rs supposed to be 515 yeah i think so right what is the the GT three was like five oh two or yeah, five oh four? It's something. It's like five oh four. It was some. Yeah. We're like again. We're splitting hairs. Okay. So then this car comes out, and what do they give it? Five oh seven. Who cares at that point? Yeah. Really, you're not buying that car for a number. Um, if you're statistically chasing at that point, when those cars, that makes zero sense. You just it's over five hundred. That's what you just need to say. I mean, it sounds even weird. Like even for people that don't like. 
much like ammo, cars. Much, if you're sitting at a dinner table, yeah. like, oh, how much horsepower does your GT3 have? Well, it's 504 horsepower. Just say it has over 500. Yeah, like, that just sounds cool. like, makes you sound even more of a tool. Well, and it's what the, um, that's what Andy was saying that they'd like is around the 500 horsepower mark. So I don't think we're, yeah. outside the GT2 RSs, I don't think we'll ever see. No, that's the a sweet GT3 spot for that NA, NA know, car. 600 or anything like that. Well, and, and you and I were spiraling just, but, but it's on topic with yeah. this a little bit, but where you were suspecting this car might be a 4.2 liter, mm-hmm. Andy touched on that. If you watch the, um, I think it's the Top Gear review one, when the Top Gear guy is in there with him. It's either that one or the Carpection, one of the two. Yeah, it's one of those guys, mm-hmm. one of the English guys. But anyways, they ask him about that specifically, about the engine and the horsepower, mm-hmm. and he's like, it doesn't make sense. We could have gone up. He's like, but this is a production car. This is made to run forever, well, he said. emissions, too. I, I never thought about it from the standpoint of just emissions. Yeah. But he also said, yeah. he also used Maybe the word time, forever. Yeah. yeah. He's like, this car is made to be last forever. So he's saying right there with the GT3R, the new one that's coming out, that is a 4.2 liter, that w- we all know rebuild, that rebuild, car's on, rebuild, yeah, rebuild. that car's on ours. It's always being rebuilt. So clearly, there's a huge difference between a 4.0 and a 4.2, and the way they even designed it, even with the hotter cam as he describes it, um, they built the car for longevity, mm. not for a rebuild. Which makes total sense now why the RS didn't even have a 4.2 because in their mind. I'm sure they're thinking, well, yeah, we could put a 4.2 in it. And they're like, okay, well, we don't want to put the souped-up 4.2 in it. And they're like, well, what's the point of putting in here if we're going to put a detuned 4.2? Why don't we just put a high-tuned 4.0 in it? And they're like, okay, yeah. So I could see that debate happening where they're kind of like, oh, so we're going to go up in liters and put a detuned motor in? It makes no sense. I should put the same motor in there and then make you have to rebuild it. Yeah. I think that would really change the price entry point, right? Well. Or sandbag everybody, and they find out the hard way after they pay three hundred ADM on a, you know, a two hundred fifty thousand dollar, three hundred thousand dollar car already. But, anyways, so maybe that's that's shocking that the nine nine two GT three dot two is already testing. Maybe not. Again, this we won't see this car actually probably release for at least another calendar year. Um, so that's about right. I mean, they got to really work out the hybrid piece. So, because think about what the first year. The 997.2, because I'm trying to think of those two dot twos because that yep. was like the uh, most uh, radical change back then. So it was like three years, right? Because mm-hmm. the first one was a 2010. Yep. So 07. Yeah, so that was about three years. So the 991.2 and the 991.1 was what? That was only like a two-year span because you have 16s. Kevin's is a 2016 991.1. So 2009 was the dot two. Okay, so two years. Uh, so that's right. Uh, they're on par with that then. Sure. I mean, all no, it is for a fact because we can just add it up because Albert has an 18, uh, Kevin has a 16, and they're both 991s, but one's a dot two and one's a dot yeah. uh, one. So that makes total sense. Yeah, yeah cause the, yeah, the dot So I guess this is, on, this is actually on par for what, what Porsche does with their GT cars. I mean, I guess so. maybe yeah, just because they're coming year. out so... <laughs> it's taking the productions taking so damn long with the micro trips and the... Well, I hate this damn word because it's being used so much, right? What is the uh, logistical uh, shipping logistic problem or something like yeah, that yeah. is what everybody's yeah. using. Um, but anyways, yeah, just wanted to announce that that's coming out. So probably. So 6 to 11 was the, the first gen I dot think, ones. So the interesting oh, thing, no, I good. think, with this is if you had an allocation for a 992 and you still haven't had your car built, are you now getting a dot? A dot two. If you're in the in the that's a good question. If you're in the build rent frame when the dot two c- turns over, so it wouldn't start a whole nother yeah. group of people. It's every would three it? years for sure. Because I just looked at it. so dot yeah. one dot one nine nine seven would have been oh six dot two would have been oh nine. So yeah, and it's just been it's been so long. We've been thinking about the RS and the the yeah. um, GTV's been out for long enough. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Well, the, I think it's again, it's a delivery issue. It's not. It's been out. It's been able for people to buy it. It's been a delivery thing. People just haven't been taking delivery of them as quick as in the past. Um, that's an interesting question. If anybody out there is on an allocation list, DM us or email us because if you are on an allocation for a 992 GT3 and you still haven't got yours, 
let us know if they've pushed you into the dot two realm because that would be interesting to know because as as we know all the dot twos are supposed to be better than the dot ones from improvement standpoint so um so essentially patience on this if you got in right away even if you were maybe not as valued as a customer you couldn't get one right away you might end up getting a better car you know, at least have better aero. That's That'd probably be, the dot two thing. Yeah, it's like power is probably about the same, but and you might have some better styling cues yeah. depending on. And styling's always up for debate for whoever it is, right? So mm-hmm. I guess it just depends. Um, but anyways, nevertheless, that's interesting. Um, moving on, Porsche is planning to launch its IPO. That was just kind of a maybe we might launch it. So it is saying confirmed September. This thing is launching. Expected eighty five billion dollar evaluation on that. Uh, from one one, one launch Um, huge huge number Um, so what does this mean essentially from a car enthusiast I I took it from a pessimistic standpoint Um, if if you do or don't know when when places go public it usually can change the culture of a company very quickly because now you're entering in a whole nother realm of people where people have to be taken care of because they hold so much stock there's board members there's people influencing decisions that's the biggest thing is there's board members and now you have to live up to that but it depends on yeah it still depends on who's on those board seats who's got um yeah it does it it does it does but at the same time for for continuity it's probably not going to be everybody who has porsche enthusiasm in mind obviously Mm -hmm. there's going to be some business moguls in that room And they're not going to give a shit whether Porsche goes racing. They're not going to give a shit about the 911. They're going to give a shit about the dollars and cents of what happens within Porsche. Um, So what this spells is this could be bad news for enthusiasts. Um, I'm not saying it is. Um, It's all speculation at this point. Obviously, the proof will be in the pudding once this comes out. Um, Nevertheless, it will definitely be interesting to see because this could introduce which Porsche's never really had to deal with before as bean counters coming into Porsche and maybe diluting what the design of the car may be. Meaning like, okay, well, that's too expensive. We can save money here. Okay, all of those touch points, let's make instead of aluminum, let's get them out of here and make them ABS plastic. And so we may end up getting and seeing something within Porsche that may change. Um, I want to believe that's not going to happen because they've hung on for so long. But just because I want to believe that's going to happen and you want to believe that's going to happen no, doesn't mean that's yeah. what's going to happen behind closed doors. Because when push comes to shove and these decision makers are in the room, sometimes they're not always in the favor of racing. Um, they're always not in the favor of the GT cars. They may say like, OK, well, guess what? We make all the profit on our SUV market. We make all the profit here. It's not going to be too difficult for these people to go in there and see where all the green's at and where all the red's at. And they're going to say, wow, you spend this much doing R&D with GT cars. You spend this much doing in racing. Well, guess what? Slash all that shit in half because we need to be more profitable. So make whatever half of those what you were doing, double what you're doing in the green part, and let's do that. Yeah, more obviously the future's in electric, which they know. They've been pushing towards it and probably just going to go. It'll go that direction maybe even quicker. Mm Mm-hmm. I just hope they don't lose their way because many car giants have gone this way before and they've lost their soul doing this. Yeah, there's a couple of companies looking at it. T-Row Price looking at it, and so is uh, some investment group at a guitar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just saying in, in the sense of like what, what business ends up happening when you sell off like this and you go public, you just don't get to make in-house, as many in-house decisions anymore. It just It's the facts. Um, see how long it lasts, too. Maybe they go public and then buy, somebody buys themselves back. It could, it could happen. Um, I'm just saying it could, there could be a lot of radical changes coming in the next five to 10 within Porsche is all I'm getting at. Yep. I, don't be shocked if you're one of those diehards like we are and we watch the racing program dissolve after the LMDH year and, and then the factory team goes away and it's like, wow, they go dormant basically racing um, because it costs too much money. Um, I have another topic that I'm going to tie into this later i don't want to spoil that yet after the break but uh, going back to the bean counters and things may be in cut and other things ending um i don't want to be so pessimistic obviously this is going to put a crap ton of money back into porsche's pocket however are you know are they robbing peter to pay paul on this one basically and they don't really need money but maybe 
they're being advised your stock's not going to be any higher ever. So go ahead and if you're going to make the move, now's the time to make the move. And I'm sure the family had a family decision on behind this as well. Every all of the the lever pullers that make the decisions within the family sat down and said this is a good move for the family too. So I'm sure I'm that's sure. that's probably what's coming from this as well. I really, really pray they are not going to lose their culture behind this move. Only time will tell, though, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, they could always fall out from racing, which we think is their culture, but maybe it's, it's changed in front of our eyes, but we're still holding on to the legacy of what it was. Yeah. I mean, there's ups and downs, I think, with any manufacturer within racing, but I think as a longevity standpoint, Porsche's always been in racing. Um, yes, have they have not won every year? Yes, of course not. Um but overall, year after year, are they the most winning this program out there? Yes. Um, I just, I'd hate to see that go away within our lifetime, but it may. Um, no, no follow-up info from Porsche or any any reporting source on that alternate fuel. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, e-fuel, please. Um, clearly, they ran the cars on it, but you think if it was a great success, they'd be shooting fireworks off and talking about it. But I haven't heard anything about it yet, so who knows. Um, again, we said maybe if it didn't do well and they melted down engines, we're not going to hear anything, and we haven't heard anything, so I don't know. Um, let's take a quick break, and we'll be back. All right, we're back from break. And like I said, I'll tie that topic in, and here it is. So this is breaking. This isn't official yet, but this was leaked, apparently, a bunch of these F1 sources. Uh, Porsche is pulling out of F1. Um, no reason why yet, insider state, but at this point, there's a couple reasons um, that was put together by this source that said, basically, you know, the team principal of Red Bull was saying, regardless of who we come partnership with next year, even if we do have a partner, and he, said, he has said this many, many times in press conferences, that we are not giving up any control to any partner that comes in here with us. So that could be one reason, because maybe Porsche wants to have a little bit more control if they do come into F1 with Red Bull. Um, Again, just reading between the lines. Also, this could have everything to do with the IPO releasing next month. Yep, money's money. So they're not going to go dump money into that program. Um, I think it was something, a crazy number. What was it? $50 billion, I think, was going to be their buy-in. Yeah, it was, it was a, with it was a, a B. large yeah. number. Um, anyways, I don't think that's going to... And again, I mean, back to the team principal, um, has stood this up many times and... I don't think he's threatening. I just think he's flexing, which is a true flex. We don't need any help from we don't need any help from any outsiders with money. Red Bull does not have a problem with money. Um, stated by team principal again. Um, I totally agree with him because Red Bull has a shit ton of money. Um, additionally speaking, if you're paying attention to F1, Red Bull's doing pretty damn good right now. That, and uh, that, that, I, mean, I think they, they will win. For yeah, sure. I think they like their relationship with Honda <laughs> as far as the motor goes. Yep. It's working out well for them. Not yes, a, they're yes, they're Ferrari situation. Yeah, their contract is all co coming to an end in 2025. But that's because of the new engine change. That doesn't mean Honda cannot produce an engine for them moving forward in 2026. Um, I think they've been in talks, um, and I'm sure that you know they probably stay with Honda. I don't know that, but I mean. You would if you're winning. Yeah. I mean, why, why would you go anywhere else? And if you watched any pri – their, their relationship with Renault before Honda was a nightmare for them. They were having problems with engines, all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, their cars look strong right now. They look – Max looks untouchable. Um, they have a pretty good setup. Uh, so this probably comes on the heels a little bit of that. So there's a little bit of the IPO. There's a little bit of Red Bull saying, hey, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, well, and if they're not really wanting help, then why would you as Porsche put money towards it? Like, exactly. why would you waste your money? Yeah, basically, again, going back to probably just trying to buy their way in, as we stated in previous episodes of, okay, this is the one thing we don't have, a Constructors' Championship to attach our name to. We don't have that. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that was the reason why. But again, infinite numbers of reason why for Porsche to pull out of this. None of them have actually been confirmed. Um Additionally, you know, the bean counters could have sat down and said, okay, you're running LMDH cars next year. You're going to still support a factory endurance team that's going to try to win the factory endurance championship. And you're doing E, Formula E. Yep. Now you want to do F1 too, and then you're going to go live on an IPO next month? Not a good idea, bro. It may, 
Maybe we should take a step back. Yeah. Appreciate the racing art. So right there, those people that may be moving into that border are taking those positions and those people that are, I guess, the high-level accountants and the people that are sitting there with the money being spent and the stuff going out and the stuff coming in, maybe they sat down and said, hey, pull out of this deal. Like what? You're going to spend $50 billion and you're going to, okay, so you're going to make $35 billion after you wash the money if you go IPO because you're going to get $85 billion on your IPO? Like that doesn't make sense. Like you need to keep some of that, keep some of that money. Um, so maybe that's why they pulled out. Again, this is all speculatory stuff that I'm saying. However, yeah, there's there's both sides. There's people saying that they're going to buy dead Porsche is going to buy fifty percent of Red Bull, like yeah. the company. That too. <laughs> but I'm just saying, again, it's going back to this isn't confirmed that this has happened, but this is from a very good F1 source. It says yeah. that basically that por- it, this will officially be announced. They said in the coming weeks. Well, what else is happening in the coming weeks? Porsche's going live on the IPO. Yep. Do you think that that's... Billions. Yeah, do you think that that is not connected by any means? I think that is directly connected, and I think we're trying to connect the dots for you. You be the judge, I don't know, but I'm thinking those have something to do with each other. Yep, we'll be back in a couple of weeks and we'll find out. Yeah, we'll know for sure, right? Um, want to congratulate... Um, but, well, before we move on, I actually want to hear your opinion on this. Um, if they do actually pull out of F1, sour grapes for you, or I don't give a shit? Well, hopefully they made engines and then go into other cars, and then we can just repeat the process that Porsche has always done. Mm. Almost go into F1, make engines, make a supercar. <laughs> That's what I want. Yeah. That's the win. It, it That's probably, what we get from the Porsche people. It probably wouldn't be surprising i don't think right i think that from everybody at least it's been in the porsche realm long enough probably can see maybe that might be coming there we are like a new one right it's about time well i think flipping back to cgt stuff um i think you and i there we go so they've already done this sport classic they've done all these other like throwbacks cgt throwback with this new f1 motor yeah, and I think it'll be the LMDH motor is what really will be in it because I think you and I talked about this because, yes, those are going to be different motors, but, yes, this is a hybrid motor. It's yeah. probably going to have electric assist, yeah, all that kind of I mean, stuff, right? Because that would follow like the Like their last LMP yeah. car, right, the, the, hybrid, the 918 hybrid or whatever. The, uh, 918. Yeah, 918 hybrid. Mm-hmm. So maybe somebody where cooler heads prevailed and said, okay, so F1, if you don't know, is a hybrid style engine too. So they're saying, why are we doing LMDH if we're going to do F1? Like, let's do F1 and not do LMDH or do LMDH and not F1. That could be it, too, where they're saying this is too close for us to, you know, they're not going to be exact, but it's going to be close enough where is the money being spent going to be worth enough juice for us to squeeze here? Probably not. So they sat down and said, okay, well, we're probably going to get pretty far with this LMDH concept. To yeah. where we can build a roadworthy car yeah, from this product. I think you're right. I think what you're getting at is is it's closer to a production value than it is than it would be going to F1 and trying to do technology from that. Yeah. Because that's exactly what they did with the RS Spider mm-hmm. and with the uh, 19 919s. Yeah. Because uh, that architecture is the exact same 800 volt architecture for the uh, Taycans. Exactly. And whatever news coming out soon. Yeah. So I'm not sour, but I think it would be really rad to see Porsche in F1, but. And, and going back to It'd a previous cooler. episode, I think there was going to be a lot of new F1 followers just because of Porsche. Yeah. But I still follow F1 regardless, so it doesn't matter to me. I think it would just be neat to see Porsche in it. However, if it was at a muted level and it was only yeah. engines and only by That's decal and it say. would still be the yeah. Red Bull team, I don't know how enthusiastic I would be about it at uh, that point. The cooler move would be them to come to F1 and be like Mercedes or Ferrari yeah. and Porsches out there. Well, they probably, let's deep dive on this for a second. They probably also looked at it too. Like, if the team principal of Red Bull's saying that, and I'm sure he's not just barking that to bark it, but if he really means, hey, we're going to have full control of this thing still, well, if that engine doesn't do what they designed it to do and they don't get to tweak it, well, it's not even just that. On the highest level, they're showing that Porsche engines failed and they didn't win a championship. That's a big deal. So, that's a lot to risk for them if they're not going to be involved. I'm sure if they were allowed to tweak the engine and screw with the engine um, with the Red Bull team as opposed to them saying, like, well, here's the engines and they're ours now, you know, and you stay the hell out of here. Yes, you made them. 
uh, we'll consult with you guys, but you're not going to come in here and play with the engines in front of us. Like, we're the engineers. This is our shit. Um, if it's going down like that, maybe Porsche's looking at it like, well, we're not going to let them control our product and let's not let us tweak it to make it the best. And if it fails, they're going to be able to blame us and, and then basically drag us through the mud to say, like, well, we didn't win a championship because Porsche's engines didn't do what they were supposed to do. So maybe there's more for them to risk is the way they're looking at this, too, than to gain from this, if you look at it from a business perspective. True. Bad, bad, bad press. Yeah. So. You know, where everybody's like, oh, well, look at Porsche. Mercedes whipping that ass out there, but Porsche can't build an engine to do F1, you know. There's always that. Or whatever the hum hum. Like the... the the lang- <laughs> you would know where I was going with that, right? Like whatever the accent was for that. Um, so yeah, maybe there's just too much. I guess lines not you know being right next to each other with the LMDH car with the F1 development. Who knows? Well, all of this stuff will get sorted out in the coming months, I'm sure. Um, Want to give a big shout out to the PAF uh, Porsche team uh, winning v- VIR. So well, that's cool. Yeah. So. Big up to them. That team's killing it this year, actually. I think that's their fifth win uh, yeah, this year. Well. Uh, so they're doing really well. Um, always excited to see them. We love what they do there, so just want to give them a shout-out. Uh, they have a lot of energy on that team. They have a lot of fire on that team, and it funnels all the way down to uh, their mechanics and their pit crews and their teams. Um, you know, they're always that fun team. It's, it, it, and I'm sure you know, only a handful of you follow me on Instagram. But we've taken pictures when they have the deck lids off. You know, they'll have, like, little stickers on their stuff. You know, it says, like, mm-hmm. send it in their engine bay. Yep. Like, just cool kind of Hoonigan-type shit on their car. Even though they're a professional product, like, below that stuff, they're, they're, they're the go-get-it guys. And we kind of like that. We can resonate with that because we are those go-get-it guys, too. So we love that about them. That's a cool livery. I mean, you can't go wrong with the plaid. They're, they're the first ones to really go different than just the normal yeah. livery. And now they're known for that, almost yep. kind of like when Flying Lizard came out with their livery, and it was, I'm sure people at that time in the early <laughs> or late 90s, I should say, with their RSR car, they're kind of like, what the hell is that? But that car was successful. They won championships. And now that car in racing history, that livery is very popular. Um, so FAF is doing that with their own checkered plaid livery that car is very popular a lot of people love that car and it's making a name for itself right if it, if it was the slowest thing out there no one would probably care right like probably be like oh it's kind of cool livery but it sucks they're always in like 10th place um yeah but, exactly you know they're always winning so you got to give them credit um so porsche fest happening this oh, weekend yeah. in indianapolis um we went to it not was it last year yeah yeah, it was like, golly, that feels like an eternity ago, doesn't it? Yeah. So we went last year because um, it was combined with Louf de Cult, uh up there. That was fun. Uh, we're not making that trip, obviously, again. There are some people making that trip. Um, I think the coolest highlight of this weekend, obviously, there's going to be a lot of cool ones, but I think one of the biggest ones that stands out from a press-related standpoint is Jeff Gordon's going to be racing in the Carrera Cup I've at Indy. I've seen that everywhere. Yeah. So... As you know, we've, we shout him out all the time. Our good friend and uh, hometown hero, Michael McCarthy, will be racing door-to-door with him. So we'll be rooting for Michael. Kick his ass, Michael. Um, show him what time it is. He is definitely over the hill, so get this his ass out of there. Turns, so yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll see what you got. Um, now, this isn't something uncommon from other race car drivers, from other sports retiring. We've seen F1 guys. We've seen other NASCAR guys, Jimmy Johnson being one. Uh, in particular, that's racing with the Allied prototypes, Racing yeah. yeah, prototype team, the LMP race car team in the EMSA series. Um, so, you know, he, re- he retires from one thing and then goes racing in another. Um, I don't know if Jeff Gordon's going to carry on in the Career Cup series. I don't know if this is just a one and done just because it's I an indie. I wonder if going to show up at Rolex. Yeah. I wonder if this is kind of like a little like, hey, let me get my feet we'll See how this. you feel about yeah. it type of deal. Um, well, what it could be is maybe see how you feel type of deal and maybe he'll start running Carrera Cup the entire series next year is what he might do. Um, I don't know if he's going to try to go get into a, uh, a GT three R off the bat, because obviously this is a totally different car Mm. than the GT three R. Nevertheless, it brings a lot of, um, I guess, press to that series. 
Um, there's already some pro level drivers, some other winners in there. There's a championship winner, Lee Keen. He's he's racing in that series. So there are some big names in that series. There's some young drivers coming out of that series that are going to be big time uh, moving forward. No, like was that Kylon Verlo is going to yeah. be going? Every Kelly Moss car. Yeah, I think without. I don't know if we're supposed to share this, so I probably won't share it, but there's some inside baseball. Basically, he's going to be racing for a team next year in yeah. EMSA series. So I don't want to announce that yet because I don't even know if that's knowledge for everyone. I think that's inside baseball he just for found us. Out. That's good. No, not like him, but I meant like yeah. the team he's racing I with. And like, I, I think everybody knew he was going to be on a pro car uh, in the EMSA series and out of Carrera Cup, but I don't think the announcement of the team that he's going to be racing for is is news yet i think they probably want to play that close to their chest and i want to respect that um so that's that's happening there um so most surprising things that's happened in the last couple weeks i've got two of them actually one's a really funny one and then uh the other one is i don't know a good one for debate so we'll start with the funny one both of these are on bring a trailer by the way uh, a set of D90 wheels. Uh, those are design 90s. Those came standard on the 964. Um, Michael doesn't like these at all. I don't think a lot of people like these. Um, they're heavy, man. I had to move these around from a couple houses from because I've been tr- toting. I mean, if you're a parts per, uh, not a parts person, but if you're a car person, we all know when you move houses, you do stuff. You've been toting fucking parts around for how long to what house, and it's like you might need them. Yeah, or maybe someday they'll become popular again, right? Exactly. So. If this is any inclination of why I shouldn't be dragging them around, I'm going to ahead and tell you, so I'll save you the suspense. D90, so they came on the 89 to 91. Uh, these are 16 by 6 in the front, 16 by 8 in the rear. Um, they're the ones that kind of look, you've seen them on 944s a lot. Uh, they came standard on those cars. They're just not a very pretty wheel. I think I've seen a couple brands actually like augmented wheel make them in an 18 or a 19 where they look kind of dope and have like a little bit of a lip. I actually like them in a way. I like the design. I just don't like how small they are, to be honest with you. They're 16s. That doesn't fit the 964 that well. Anyways, they sold for a whopping $320. That's right. All four wheels sold for $320. I thought I was going to see that. I thought I was going to see the opposite. It was going to be like just go bananas. Yeah. But I guess not. So this dude who sold them lost money on these things because he has to ship them still. Yeah, like he, he he's paying to to get rid of them. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, dude? Like, why would you put D nine? Well, first of all, this just shows you that bring a trailer is taking anything because that was a stupid ass thing for them yeah, to d- take. One of them on eBay going for two hundred dollars. Because that just one shows you who's ever filtering stuff that comes in there is asleep at the wheel. Yeah. Because. That no way in hell should is that a rare part? No way in hell that even if they were brand new, perfect NOS stock, they shouldn't have been taken in and said like, "Oh yeah, cool." Um, I think those D9ers do pretty good. Let's see what happens. So hopefully somebody got you know some pay deducted for letting this kind of come through on that. Yeah. Could you imagine if you were the clown who had to do the write up on this? You're like, you want me to write, do a write up on the D90s? Well, these things were fashionable, sixteen inch wheels coming in a nine six four. Or offset, bro. 16 by 6 is in the front and 8's in the rear. 8's, bro. So much tire. I think Geo Trackers came with like 16's, didn't they? (laughs) (laughs) Anyways. And and cool colors, at least. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways. That was, I found comical. What an epic fail on that. Well, Um, I just like quick glance at eBay. Like there's there's sets that are like going for 1,600 bucks. Yeah. I don't know. But I'm just saying like. Again, so on the opposite way yeah. of setting the market, right? People are like, oh, I know what I got, bro. Well, all of those people for selling them for $1,600 on eBay, well, guess what? You know what you got, bro. $320 worth of rims or wheels or whatever you want to say. That was for all four. That's true. The guy that won just you know, paid shipping for free wheels. It's fine. Dude, I would I would just go disappear off that. I wouldn't I wouldn't contact the guy who won. I'd be like, I'm sorry, bro. I'm not selling these to you for three twenty. That also, is not happening. It also speaks to the enthusiast that's on bring a trailer because that means that they're so discerning. They're like, nope, don't want these. Don't want these. Don't yeah. want these. All right, if I get these for three hundred twenty bucks, well, that's fine. A little bonus coverage on this too. On the flip side, now that you say that, there were like a set of cups that sold a week and a half ago for like eleven thousand dollars. Seventeen inch wheel cups. See? Look at the difference in that, though. Yeah. I don't think these wheels are that bad. I don't think they're $320 bad. I do think they should be 
you know, maybe a thousand bucks for yeah, all four. four exactly. I mean, that's a Porsche. Yeah. It's a Porsche wheel. Yeah. Um, Which in turn going back to DBS wheel. And yeah, going too. back to it, I think it's actually a pretty cool wheel. I just think they're a little small. That's it. Is the issue. I mean, if these came, honestly, if my, mine came with these, if it was like a, you know, a 17 by 8 in the front and like a 17 by 9 in the rear, these actually probably look a lot cooler. But, you know, this was, again, these were made in 89, so that means the design in these were probably made in 85. Deadly. <laughs> Let's be real. So it's not like they made them that year. Hey, bro, check out this sick design. Yeah. You're killing it, bro. 1985 off the flick. <laughs> And then they come out in 1991. They're like, that shit's played out. 17s is the only way to go. <laughs> Damn. But anyways, I thought that was a funny thing to bring up. Um, the next. Oh, and before I move on with that, because I did make this annotation that I want to say, this has to be the mo- the record low sale for bring a trailer of all time. Well, it has to be like I'm just for, wheels for, for, in general. I'm just saying of any item, because like, they sell all types of stuff yeah. for any item that's ever sold. I mean, even just like. Posters and shit they've sold have probably sold for higher than this on Bring yeah. a Trailer. You'd have been better off to put it on uh, Facebook Marketplace for free. Hell yeah. Dude, this guy would have got, he would have got more putting on Facebook Marketplace. He could have got 500 bucks from Facebook Marketplace. I guarantee someone who gave him, somebody with a 944 or somebody or, or something like that had even crappy wheels. They probably were like, I'll give him 500 bucks for those. They look like they're in decent shape. Um, the next one is a little bit more for debate. Uh, 2005. 996 GT3 with 94,000 miles sells for 87.5. So, a lot of money for a driver quality car, or Not shocking because seems affordable. What you decide? I want to hear your thoughts on this. Um, let's see. So easy. I'd say I'm shocked because it does seem affordable in this market for whatever reason. Um, they're not making any more 996 gt 3 so that's something you're hard set on. I mean, it's out there. It's for sale. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's a shot you got to take um, to get one. Yeah. No accidents on this car either, by the way. I would hope at 94,000 miles, like anything we talk about with high mileage, uh, one, it got used, so that's good. Yeah. And then secondly, that things have been done to it to, you know, cool lines, all that good mm-hmm. stuff by, by this point. Yeah. Um, maybe you got some cool goodies yeah. attached to yeah, it. Yeah, it had some good yeah. upgrades on it. So I guess I, I'm in the camp with you a lot of guilt-free miles ahead of you because somebody's already put a lot of miles on it. So this is a driver quality car that literally, if you wanted to, if you were one of those types of people, That's you could daily life. drive yeah. this car. Yeah. You could do this, do anything that you wanted with this car. Now, the next question is, like you already answered your portion, the 87.5 seems affordable in this market. I think that still, even in this market, for a 94,000-mile 996 GT3, I think that's strong money. Personally, yeah, I think it's. I think it's and because the, the because realm, but. even you know, and it wasn't that long ago. Um, yes, I know we're not, and I and it's not like I'm reaching back like some old man, and you know, it's chewing the fat. Yeah. Like I remember, you know, back in '07, like literally just two years ago, this car probably would have been worth of all like fifty five, sixty thousand dollars, if that. Yeah, because that would have been in super high mileage GT three. But again, that I feel like every GT three that. So for me, I feel like that's a large, my brain hasn't adjusted yet to that Delta with the mileage of this car yet, because I don't know, I I was seeing cars that had 50,000 miles two years ago selling for 65 grand, 75 grand. GT3s, I mean, 996 GT3s. Because yeah, I was shopping those. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Me again, personally. If it's I know your, that for a fact because I was going to buy one. I bet you're a GT, I mean, if you're, the GT3 ain't your goal. And you just that's that's it. I mean, and I was even saying, I was like, oh man, fifty five thousand miles or fifty thousand miles. I was like, is that car even worth sixty grand or sixty five grand? It's the forever car. Then it's the forever car. Yeah, I get that, but you know, we know how you feel about nine nine sixes. That's definitely not a forever car for you. I light that thing on fire. <laughs> burn him at the stake. No, I you was burn looking. him. He's a witch. <laughs> I knew it. Burn him. He's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I was looking at that 996 before I bought the... Bought the I project. know, I know. I was helping you shop. I remember you and I were having... Everybody who's close to anybody... Which was, which was coincidentally 85,000. They start to talk to their friends. Miles. Yeah, they start yeah. to talk to their friends. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, 65,000 miles. 30,000 miles less than this car, and you were going to pay how much less, right? Uh, like two grand. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
But still, I mean, mileage wise. No, mileage wise, I think it might have been in the fifties. Okay. So, so even fifty thousand miles, eighty five thousand dollars. Like I feel like that would if this car had that kind of mileage at that price, I think that would have been fair. Obviously in this market, that's what, a hundred plus car now. Or at yeah. least that's what people are paying. Yeah. I don't think it's no. I don't think it's a hundred plus car, my my personal yeah. opinion, but the market says otherwise. Um but yeah, those were two of the highlights. I just kind of wanted to reach that out there. I, I really got a kick out of those D90s for $320. I, what a kick in the nuts that was, man, for that person. Posters up on Instagram. So. <laughs> D90s free. Take them from my house free. now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I don't have anything else for him. Do you? I don't. All right. Talk to you guys on the next one. See you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of PCAR Talk. Connect with us on Instagram at PCARTalk or online at PCARTalk.com.